Ah, man, the ends of these frets are as sharp as a medieval torture device. Time to do a little bit of beveling. Hey guys, if you value and appreciate the information that I share here on my Highland Guitars YouTube channel, consider supporting my channel by visiting eGuitarPlans.com and purchasing a plan for either building a guitar or one of the tools that you can use to build a guitar. And if you would like to help support the channel but want something more tangible, you can purchase a t-shirt from my merch shelf down below. Either way, there's links in the description. Hey guys, it's Chris at Highline Guitars and we are at episode 15 of my four string bass guitar build. And in episode 14, I had applied my clear coats on the guitar body. Now logic would dictate that the next steps would be to level sand, polish sand, and then buff out that clear coat to a high gloss shine. However, that's gonna wait a little while. Um, I've learned that when you buff out your finish too soon during the uh, uh, construction and assembly process, there's a good chance you're going to scratch and mar that beautiful clear coat finish as you're doing the assembly work. And that means you're gonna have to re-sand, re-buff it, do all that. So rather than make more work for myself, I'm just gonna hold off and do that work much later on in the process. What I'm gonna to do today is I'm going to revisit the neck. And what I need to do uh, in this episode is I need to form a 35 degree bevel on the ends of my frets. Because right now the, uh, the, fr the, the ends of the frets are pretty much raw from just cutting in and pressing in the frets. So I need to grind those really sharp edges back and form a 35 degree bevel to make the guitar much more comfortable to play, or, or the fretboard at least more comfortable to play. So that when you're sliding your, your fretting hand up and down, you're not tearing off chunks of skin as you play the guitar. So let me bring you in a little closer and I'll explain a little bit more in detail what I'm gonna be doing and um, how this process will proceed. So what I'm gonna be doing is using this tool that I made. Uh, in fact, I did a video on this tool. Uh, it's specifically intended for grinding these ends into a 35 degree bevel. And if you wanna see how I made this tool, it's really simple. Uh, I'll post a link up above so that you can check out that video after you finish watching this video. But what I'm gonna do is I'm going to use this tool to form that bevel. Now in truth, it would seem logical at this stage to do all of the fret work. Since I've got the neck right here, there's no body in the way, and I could get the frets leveled, I could recrown them, uh, I could dress the ends, and then I could polish them. However, just like buffing out the clear coat finish on the body, some things are best left done later. <laughs> I hope that makes sense. But if I did all the work now, and then later on installed the finished neck into the body as I was doing final assembly, there's a, a possibility that very slight changes in the geometry of the neck, and specifically the fretboard's relationship to the bridge, could require me to do some, if not all, of that work over again. And I've, I've learned this the hard way through experience. So rather than do all the leveling and recrowning and polishing and all that work for the frets, I'm gonna do that part of it later on. However, I am going to bevel the frets and do a little bit of dressing work on those bevels because with this tool, it's easier to do this work before the neck is installed into the body. I don't have to worry about the tool smashing into the body as I'm doing the work. Now, basically how this tool works is, you know, I've got this flat surface here, and this is Delrin plastic, and it's just gonna rest on top of the frets. And I try to keep the block as level and parallel to the, the fretboard as I can. And then as you can see, the file, which is gonna do all the work, is at a 35 degree angle. And this file only cuts in one direction, this direction. That's why I have an arrow pointing this way, so I always know that I have to run the file 
in this direction for it to do its work. Now, as I'm forming that 35 degree bevel, as the file is, is grinding away on the ends of the frets, it's not scraping it off and, and turning that metal into tiny par particles. I mean, it, yes, it is doing that, but it's also smearing that surface of the fret. So what we end up with is we end up with this nice 35 degree bevel on the ends of the frets. But if you look really closely, if you were to look at it with a magnifying glass, you would see that there is a very slight smearing of that metal off this, uh, this end of it. Um, the nut end of it on this side, on this side, because it's cutting in the other direction, the hook would be on the heel side or facing the heel side. And you can actually feel that as you run your fingers along the fretboard. So I'm going to be using a very, very fine fret dressing file just to knock off that little bit of a hook. And this is really the preliminary stage of dressing the frets. And later on, when I'm sanding out the tool marks left from recrowning, I'll also be sanding the bevel smoother because this will leave some, some teeth marks in the ends of that of the fret. So I need to remove that if I want to get a nice polish. So later on, once the uh, neck has been installed into the body and all the fret work has been done, I will continue with addressing the edges of these frets to get them as smooth as possible. But for now, I'm just going to take this tool and it's just a matter of slowly moving it along. And some of these frets are sharper and more jagged than the other ones. It's just a, the nature of cutting the, the frets to length. So I don't put very much pressure. I just run it along here and get it started and get it going until it feels like I've got the surface starting to get smooth enough to where I can apply a little more pressure and not worry about the tool hanging up as I'm moving it forward. It's going to be a little harder back here because the frets are closer together and sometimes I have to go at it a little bit more in this area before continuing on. But this will take several minutes of work to get the frets beveled and flush with the edge of the fretboard. Okay, as you can see, I have formed that bevel, 35 degree bevel, into the end of the fret. However, and I'm using a little pointer tool here, right on this side where the bevel meets the rest of the crown, it's fairly smooth. Because remember, my file was grinding towards the front of the, the, the nut, which is um, the pointer is kind of indicating where the nut is. So this side is fairly smooth, but this side, however, there's a hook and I can actually feel it as I move this pointer against the crown towards that bevel. There you can, there's a definite hook right in there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my super fine fret dressing tool here. And I'm just going to work over both edges here just for the sake of symmetry. But I'm mainly concerned with this side of it, the nut side of the fret, because that's where that little hook is. And if I can get rid of that now with, you know, before the neck is installed into the body, it's going to be that much easier to do the dressing 
later on before I polish. And how far I take this dressing is, you know, it's really, it's personal preference. Some guys like to do that full on round over, which is fine, you know, but it's a lot of work to do that for very little reward. It looks great and other luthiers think it's cool, but most guitar players don't really pay that much attention to it. As long as it feels comfortable here and isn't causing any uh, discomfort as you slide your fingers back and forth, especially if you're, a, if you're a shredder and move your fingers really fast, as long as that feels smooth and comfortable, that's really all it needs. And this is, this is pretty much as far as I'll take it at this stage. Okay, so then one last little detail. I'm just gonna take some 220 grit sandpaper and then just lightly hit that beveled edge as well as where the fret meets the edge of the fretboard just to kind of soften it up a little bit, take away some of the tool marks. I'll do that on both sides. And of course, I'm gonna be doing a lot more fret work on this neck later on. But for now, this is good enough. So next up, I'm going to apply some boiled linseed oil. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to apply a liberal amount of the boiled linseed oil to this entire neck, including the fretboard. And I'll let that soak in and it should dry and cure over the next couple of weeks, which is plenty of time. I've got a lot of other work that I'll be doing on this guitar in the meantime, so I can apply it, let it soak in. But what this is also gonna do is, it's gonna help me to see the condition of the wood that I'm applying it to. So if I have missed any spots sanding it, this will reveal it. So I'll just get that on the rag. And I think we'll start with the back. Let me move this out of the way. And what I'll probably do is apply a couple of coats just to make sure I get enough on here. Because I really want this boiled linseed oil to soak into the wood where it will cure and that will seal the wood, which will protect it from airborne humidity, moisture, which is the enemy of a guitar neck. So. All right, well, I've hung up the neck and I'm gonna let it dry for a couple of days. And I'll probably revisit a couple of spots with some sandpaper that could, could use a little extra work. And once I've done that, I'll apply a second liberal application of the boiled linseed oil. And I'll let that dry and cure for probably about two weeks. And in the meantime, Got a lot more work to do on the body. Got to make the pick guard and then I've got to make the pickups and install all the electronics. And then of course I have to level sand, polish sand and buff out that clear coat to a high gloss shine. So in the meantime, as always, make sure you hit that uh, thumbs up button, click the subscribe button if you don't already subscribe. And if you've got any comments or questions, post them down below and either I or somebody in the community will uh, endeavor to try to answer your questions. And as always, until the next episode, take care, stay safe, 
and I hope you'll join us for the continuing adventures of building this four-string bass guitar.